official newspaper files of the early West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. Among them, born in 1848, Bell Star, horse thief and harborer of criminals, lived hard and fast enough to become known in her day as Queen of the Bandits and to go down in history as America's most notorious woman outlaw. Fort Smith, a small village on the border of the Indian nation, where gunshots and violent death were commonplace. One of the roughest and toughest towns of the Old West. like the savings and loan bank to me, Sam. What's the best? Never mind what's the best. How much have you lost? Not too much, Bell. I was just... I gave you $1,500 to put in the bank. How much have you got left? did I marry? Throwing away my hard-earned cash on the gambling tables. Money I made myself. Get up! Get on your feet, you lazy Indian. You gonna lay there all day? Rest you, gentlemen. Put your money on the table. Shove the money into the hat, you. All of it. Every penny! Get in your horses. Your arm, Mr. Starr. It's time we were leaving. Look. Well, I was just trying to... Don't you know yet how to treat a lady? Open the door! If any of you gentlemen thinks he's got change coming, look me up at Younger's Bend. You're so good at spending my money. Now, let's see if you can help me make some. Where are we going, Bill? Up to Dodge City. There are a couple hundred head of horses corralled up there just waiting for shipment. I'll go get in your horse pronto. I'm Matt Clark, railroad detective. Over 100 head of horses destined for the United States Cavalry and consigned to the railroad had been stolen from shipping points along the right-of-way. I was assigned the task of following the trail of the thieves and bringing them in. This usually began with the questioning of possible witnesses, people to be used later when the outlaws are caught and brought to court. Yeah, they spooked the herd out of here night before last. Cut out the best of the stock, stampeded the rest. Did you get a good look at the rustlers? Ah, uh, too dark. One thing I'm sure of, though, the leader was a woman. A woman? Yep. I could hear this female yelling orders and see the feather in her white hat. I know those weren't your horses, sir. You were just holding them for shipment. 
But do you think you could identify any of them if you ever saw them again? Yeah, I could some. It was one little blooded colt in particular. A bay with a blaze face and three white stocking feet. I got kind of attached to him. If we caught the thieves, would you be willing to testify against them? Sure would. Just give me the chance. Might at that. So long. The trail led to the Indian nations. By the time I reached the nations, I began to feel that the horse thieves I was after were Belle Starr and her gang. My final stop turned out to be Fort Smith, Arkansas, a hop and a jump from Indian territory. It had a reputation equal to Dodge, Abilene, or any other cow town crossroads, with the added distinction of being a fence for stolen livestock and a refuge for whiskey peddlers bootlegging fire water to the Redskins. Hello, Bill. The man I wanted to see first was a local sheriff. So it was a meeting I didn't care to make public. Sure, why, of course. How have you been? I take it you're here on business, Mr. Clark. Yeah, that's right. I've trailed a gang of horse thieves all the way from Dodge. I've got good reason to believe it's Bell Star. You're not the only one with a good reason. She came in here last week with them horses. Sold them all in one day. Why didn't you pick her up? She had bills of sale. They're forgeries. No doubt. But proven it is something else. Uh, do you happen to have a description of all them horses and prior bills of sale? Not only that, I've got a half a dozen witnesses who are willing to appear against her. All we have to do is arrest Bell. You think that's going to be easy? Where does Bell live? Oh, about 15 miles from here, a place called Younger's Bend. I wouldn't go down there alone, though. That is, unless I was tired of living. How often does she come to town? Once a week. I'll stick around her so you can get in touch with me. I was just fixing to have myself by lunch. Won't you join me? No, thanks, Sheriff. I got some unfinished business. I'll see you later. Oh, what's the big idea? Who do you think you are? Right then, it wouldn't have taken much to flatten me, too. Sprawled there on the sidewalk looking up at me was Frankie Adams, another railroad detective who had worked with me in the past. What are you doing in Fort Smith? Working as a dressmaker. What are you doing? That horse thieving case in Dodge. Looks like it might be Bell Star. Then you're in luck. I'm working on her, too. As a dressmaker? Why not? Bell Star's just like any other woman. Crazy about clothes. You should see the gown we made her. Does she come in for fittings? Naturally. When? Wait a minute. You can't move in yet. The case is still cold. Well, you're way behind. Right now, the case is really hot. When's your next fitting? 2.30, Friday, day after tomorrow. Good. Make her something in blue denim. The latest thing in prison wear. It's been a real pleasure meeting you, ma'am. May I have the privilege of calling on you in the near future? In the near future, you best mind your manners and your own business, sir. Good day. Yes? 
I do trust you weren't leaving, my dear. Well, I, uh... I was going down the street to have my scissors sharpened. Mac can wait till you've finished with me. Get the dress and let's have a look at it. Yes, ma'am. Hats off in the presence of ladies. Now get out of here. Oh, there it is. We still have a little work to do on the bodice, Mrs. Starr. After all, you are two days early, Mrs. Starr. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me. I seldom keep appointments on time. Too unhealthy. Looks finished to me. Well, uh, the lining needs sewing. If you'll wait just half an hour, I'll finish it. Hmm. Can't wait. I'll take it as this. How much do I leave? Uh, Mrs. Smith isn't here. You know, I just work for her. I'll go ask her. Look it up in the books. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to have to ask you to stand right where you are. No, honey. Just what do you think you are trying to do? I'm taking you to the sheriff. You are a fool. Why, I could draw and plug you before you could pull the trigger. Go ahead and try it. Yeah. Don't tell the boss about this.
I felt so confident that the sheriff would capture Bell, I sent for the rancher who had witnessed the rustling, hoping he could make a definite identification. You sent for me, Mr. Clark? Yeah, that's right. Is that one of the horse thieves? Yep. Are you sure? Well, it was dark, but get out. Take a good look. But I got real close to him. Yeah, I'm almost positive. Of course, if you'd have found the horses, then it would have been a different story. Just as soon as we find where the horses are hidden, I'll get in touch with you. Thanks again. Glad to be of help. Howdy, Sheriff. Well, you don't have to tell me. You had her hooked, but she got away. Oh, it's that thoroughbred she rides, Matt. There's not a horse in the territory can outrun him. What about Sam here? You get any more out of him? No, he hasn't been very sociable. Maybe he'll change his mind when he finds out he's carrying the entire load for Bell and the rest of the gang. Lock him up. How about it, Matt? Care for a little drink? Oh, thanks, Sheriff. I think Sam would like to have some, though. What? Give a drink to that drunken... That's the general idea. Oh. oh, I guess you're right, Matt. Poor old Sam's rode just as hard as the rest of us. How about it, Sam? Care for... What's the matter with you? You're drunk. Sam, not drunk. Sheriff beat me up. He beat me real bad, Bill. My head. What'd you tell him? What'd you tell him? Tell him nothing. Nobody makes Sam talk either one. Let's get you out of here. wouldn't remember because he was too drunk last night. But he had told us who Bell had sold the horses to, that they knew the herd was stolen and had planned to move them up country at once. We were pretty sure because of what had happened, Bell would be coming around to warn them. Recognize any of those horses down there? Sure, at least a dozen of them. There's that little bay colt I was telling you about, the one with the blaze on his face. She was a favorite of my old family. Here she comes, Matt. Look who's with her. That's a female bandit, all right. I'd recognize that hat and feather anywhere, day or night. She'll most likely be heading for that pass across the valley. We'll move around and give her a little reception. I'll get Sam. You arrest Bell. You've got a horse that can outrun her. Right.
reception did surprise him. In the gun smoke and dust of the running horse herd, Bell and Sam got separated. The sheriff took care of Sam. Bell's trial created a sensation in the territory. She was the first woman in the country ever to be convicted on a charge of horse stealing. She appeared in Hanging Judge Parker's federal court of the Western District of Arkansas at Fort Smith. The trial lasted four days, from the 15th to the 19th of February, 1883. It was our rancher's identification of the little colt that really won the case for us. Sam was convicted on one and Bell on two charges of horse stealing. Both were sentenced to the federal penitentiary in Detroit. Bell and Sam spent a year behind the gray prison walls and then were released with time off for good behavior. They both headed back to Younger's Bend where they took up the old life where they left off. For Bell was arrested several times, though never convicted. And Sam met a violent end in a pistol duel with an Indian deputy who had once arrested him. Then one day, several years later, while I was sitting in my office at railroad headquarters, Hello, Matt. Frankie, it's good to see you. Nice to see you. What have you been doing? Oh, same old thing. Sit down. Thanks. I'm just closing out the files on the Bell Star case. No doubt you remember. Oh, how could I forget? I read some time ago that she was murdered. Did they ever find out who did it? No, and they probably never will. It's quite a mystery. Seems Bell had ridden halfway to Fort Smith with a friend of hers. Bell decided to turn back at the Canadian River and was coming back to Younger's Bend alone. Here, read it. The wild and daring Bell Star died as simply as that. Yep. Shot from her horse by an unknown assassin. Weren't there ever any suspects? A farmer named Watson looked good for a while. He was supposed to have been blackmailed by Bell. The case was thrown out of court for lack of evidence. Some people even think it might have been her own son. A week previous to her death, she whipped the boy because he had mistreated one of her horses. You know, Frankie, I don't think we'll ever know.